should say that it's uh, hosted in the States, but they have funding to bring international students. So uh, there's a girl that I worked with on another project from South Africa, and she went this year. It's kind of cool. Um, Anyway, these are the collaborators for this specific project, though. So Jane Green, Boris Brunkov, Josh Carlson, who is the one that brought the problem, uh, Leslie Hopin, and Carolyn Reinhardt. Okay, so cops and robbers uh, played on a graph. So you uh, give in a graph, and you place a cop, and then you place a robber. And the cop moves towards the robber, trying to catch him or her, and robber moves away. So they take turns going and with the goal of landing on the same vertex. And you'll see here now the robber has nowhere else to go, so he's captured, and that's the goal of the cop. Okay. Uh, so more formally, uh, pursuit evasion game played on a simple graph. Um, and I guess sometimes it's defined a simple graph with loops. So you have the option to state what you would like. And First in introduced independently by Kilo in a PhD thesis, and then Noah Kowski and Winkler. And then a year later, Inger and Fom, um, they asked the question, what's the minimum number of cops needed to catch this robber? And it's played over a sequence of discrete time steps in which both the set of cops and the robber, so you don't need just one cop, you can have multiple cops, uh, take turns moving. And uh, you move to a neighboring vertex, or you remain on your own. And then, so uh, for our purposes, we are going to be caring about the time that these things take. So time step zero is just the placement. Cops and the robber. Uh, the robber went first, obviously, the cops went first. Go to the same vertex. Okay. And we'll say that the cops win if after some finite number of rounds, doesn't matter how long, uh, they can occupy the same vertex as the robber called a capture, and the robber wins if there's a way to uh, evade the cops indefinitely. Okay, so uh, we'll define the cop number of a graph, C of G, to be the minimum number of cops necessary to guarantee that the cops can win. And we'll say a special class of graphs, they're called cop win, uh, if you only need one cop to catch the robber. Uh, so the easiest example of this is a path. It doesn't matter where you place the cop or where you place the robber, the cop can always catch the robber. And interestingly, this graph turns out to be cop one as well. So uh, when we did that first example, you may have been asking yourself, well, what if the robber had just started somewhere else? And I'll show in a second why this one is also cop one. Uh, next question, are all graphs cop one? No. Uh, obvious example is the cycle. So this one needs two cops, and then they can catch the robber. Okay, everybody understand the game? Not too bad. All right, um, so establishing bounds for this cough number has been well studied. So we saw the path, uh, also a tree, uh, have cough number one, um, cycle cough number two, planar graphs uh, less than or equal to three, and outer planar less than or equal to two. Uh, and in fact, for cough one graphs, they can be recognized in polynomial time via a decomposition algorithm uh, that relies only on knowledge of the neighbors of the vertices. And so, for example, what it really is is this dismantling order. So, uh, here you go. So, uh, when we looked at this before, the cop or the robber was caught here. And as soon as the robber went here, one thing that you notice is that its neighborhood is completely contained by another vertex, so this one right here. And so, because we were able to get the cop here, the robber had no place to go. And so you can sort of undo the graph in this way, and if you can repeat this process, uh, then the graph is called cop win. So for example, I take out that vertex, and now I ask the same question, is there another vertex here that has the same property where its neighborhood is completely contained? And sure enough, this one. And I should also say we can keep doing this. And these orders aren't necessarily unique, you just need one of them. And if your graph has such an ordering, then And so classifying graphs that have just a finite cop number, that's also been done. Um, but the characterization relies, I believe, on the product of, of a graph or graph products. And so uh, there are still a lot of open problems concerning the actual structure of these graphs. So something with cop number two, three, four, um, there are open problems there. 
Okay, uh, you can't give a talk about cops and robbers without mentioning my Neal's conjecture, uh, which states that if a graph G has order N, then this cop number is of order root N, where N is the number of vertices. Okay, uh, so now, uh, capture time. So instead of just asking yourself um, how many cops do you need, you can ask how fast these cops can capture the number. And we'll say that a strategy is optimal if it can be done in the fastest way possible. Okay, so for a path, uh, it's cop number one. You can put the cop anywhere you want. Uh, it makes sense to start with the cop in the middle. Okay, so this one, capture time four. Okay, uh, we already saw this cycle had capture time two, and the optimal starting position was just having the cops on opposite ends of the cycle. Okay, uh, so now let's say instead of using the cop number, uh, you actually increase the cop number, so or the number of cops. So <coughs> let's consider some number k that's just larger or equal to or larger than the cop number. And we'll define the k capture time to be the number of time steps used when you have k cops on your draft. Uh, and yeah, again, always using the optimal strategy. <coughs> Uh, so here, with this path, we saw with one cop, capture time was four. With two cops, it's two. Three cops, it's one. And let me point out to you, with three cops here, that's the domination number of this graph. And uh, you just place a cop on every single vertex, you get capture time zero. Okay, uh, so a couple observations. So you take the number of vertices in the graph, and you put that many cops or more, uh, capture time is zero. And if you have the domination number, capture time is one. Actually, anything between domination number and less than order of the graph. And this is monotonically decreasing. Uh, but the question that comes up is, what's stopping me from just using every, all the number of vertices, that many cops each time? So you need some sort of way to uh, kind of balance when you want to use a certain number of cops and kind of uh, how to relate that and tie in the capture time. So you want some parameter using both of these things. And so this is where we define the cop throttling number. And so we'll call this, uh, or notate it with TH subscript C of G. And it's the minimum over all possible sets of K cops plus the K capture time. So formally, um, it's like this. And so again, this comes up when you have uh, some, you want to optimize the sum of the resources that you're using, as well as the time that it takes to use these resources. So going back to this example with the path, uh, if you have one cop, four time steps, so you're throttling number five. Uh, when you use two cops, throttling number two, three cops, sorry, throttling number four. Uh, three cops has throttling number four as well. Uh, but now we see here, if I put nine cops on here, I have throttling number nine, uh, much larger. So you are penalized. So if we're trying to optimize the sum, what we want is either two or three cops. Okay. Uh, so one kind of open question in throttling is, uh, when is this number unique? So here, obviously, it's not. But um, when can you classify when it is? Or what type of graphs have that property? Uh, OK, so a couple of basic observations. Uh, this is bounded below by the cop number and above by the domination number plus one. And both bounds are tight. So if you just have one vertex, that gets the cop number. And if you have the complete graph on n greater than or equal to two. Uh, however, the gap can be arbitrarily large. So for example, this is the stellated wheel. And here, the, uh, these graphs have order 2k plus 1. And the domination number, you would put a cop on every other vertex in that cycle. Uh, however, throttling is 3. So if you put a cop in the center vertex, you can get to the robber in two steps. Okay, uh, And similarly, the lower bound as well. So uh, paths have cop number one, but the throttling is or of order root n for these. OK, so uh, tools for bounding the throttling number. So we don't just want to use the cop number and the domination number. Uh, we want to do something else. So anytime you're asked a new question in math, what do you do? Uh, you use stuff that you already know and apply it to this. So uh, one question you might be asking too is why did we decide to take the sum of these two parameters? And I mean, 
So that's another, I guess, other open questions in this area. Define it some other way. Maybe you want to multiply the two, something like that. Um, and so while throttling hadn't been applied to cops and robbers before, it has been applied to other things. Uh, so for example, uh, it's been used with zero forcing. So uh, with zero forcing, again, it's another game that can be played on a graph. And uh, basically, you start with some set of vertices and color them blue. And your goal is to color the entire rest of the graph blue, subject to some constraint or some coloring rule. And for zero forcing, the coloring rule is that if a blue vertex has one white neighbor, then it can color that white neighbor blue. So here, this one can be colored blue, uh, but this one can't because it has two white neighbors. And so again, uh, you can take this idea of throttling and apply it here. So sum up the size of this set of vertices that are colored blue and with the number of time steps needed to color the entire graph. And so the observation that we made during this workshop is that this zero forcing set is also um, a capture set. So if you put cops where all the blue vertices are, then you can capture the robber. And here's the point in the talk where normally I kind of go off to the side and I draw this picture and I say, oh, look, do you believe me? It's a, uh, it's a capture set. So let me just, uh, I guess briefly I'll explain it. So you have this graph blue vertices and white vertices, the blue vertices are going to be where we have the cops. Um, if I'm a robber, I'm going to start on a white vertex, obviously. And so now you've got each time step, you've got these blue vertices moving and they're coloring vertices, the white vertices blue. So the robber can't ever just stay on a white vertex because this is a zero forcing set. Eventually all of the vertices will be turned blue at some point. So at some point, this robber would need to move to a blue vertex. And so this is done by contradiction. So um, you say, okay, well, if the robber moves from this white vertex to a blue vertex, uh, if this isn't a capture set, then there wouldn't be a cop on that blue vertex. Um, but what that means is that the cop would have had to move to another white vertex. And so if you've got the robber moving from one white vertex to this blue one, and you've got a cop that was on there moving from a blue vertex to another white one, you had two white neighbors. So that can't be the case. So um, contradiction, and so if you have the zero working set, it is a capture set as well. Okay. Um, all right, and related to uh, standard zero forcing, there's also this uh, thing called positive semi-definite zero forcing. And same thing, some set of blue vertices and they're coloring the rest of the graph white, subject to a color change rule. And here it's done component-wise. So uh, you take the connected collections of white vertices and each of those are called a uh, separate component. And so the rule is um, if the blue vertex is adjacent to only one white neighbor in a, in a separate component, then you can do this coloring. And so it's best seen visually. So here, uh, this one on the left, same thing, can be colored one white neighbor. And here, uh, you can think of it as splitting. So now that blue vertex, because each of the white ones are in separate components, they can be colored and then piece it back together. And I'll say that this positive semi-definite set is also a zero force, or is also a capture set. And the argument is the same as before, just done component-wise. So the robber is starting in some component of white vertices. Okay. And uh, so in uh, 2017, Josh, our co-author, uh, worked on a group that applied throttling to this positive semi-definite zero forcing. And that's where he got the idea for it, to apply throttling to cops and robbers. And so from here, uh, we made the observation. So uh, the throttling number, the cop throttling number for a graph was bounded above by the positive semi-definite zero forcing number. And so we took results from there. Uh, that was the first thing we did. And we used this to bound the cop throttling number. And so here's what we have. So, um, okay. So yeah, so path, that's where we got that bound order root n. Uh, same thing for trees, same thing for cycles, and in fact, unicyclic graphs. So all of these are order root n. And so now, next question, uh, how big 
and the cop throttling number B. So recall Meinel's conjecture stated that if a graph has order N, then the cop number is bounded above by order root N. And so the next question to ask is, is this the same for the throttling number as well? And even if it's not, could it be used to prove Meinel's conjecture in some way or to get more classes of graphs uh, towards that conjecture? And so some other tools that we used so uh, click sums of graphs, uh, we have a result with the girth of the graph and the minimum degree, and also something called a burning number, which is kind of another game where you've got sort of things going on throughout the graph. So you're taking vertices and burning other vertices. Uh, okay, so um, next question. Um, so let's, uh, we considered graphs that uh, have really large crop numbers. So a graph is called a minial extremal graph, and we looked at a minial extremal family because it has a crop number of order root n. And so that was the first place to look to see if we could get a throttling number that's larger than root n. And so we looked at uh, instant graphs of finite projective planes of order q, where q is a prime power, and we're able to show that it's order theta root n. And the next class of graphs that we looked at were glasses, or classes with a large capture time. Um, so an upper bound for the capture time uh, for cop wind graphs is known to be n minus four. And later this was actually characterized. So uh, here's a family of graphs. And so just the long cap, and those have capture time n minus four. And so you ask, okay, what's the throttling for this? Um, and same thing, theta root n. Uh, so now, uh, other directions. So how much time do I have? Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, other directions. Uh, so a couple that we talked about. So define or kind of look at this parameter in another way. So we were adding them because throttling had been done for these other games or things on the graphs. So what if you defined it in a different way? Um, also just looking at it for certain families of graphs. So we looked at kind of basic ones. Uh, the one I'm interested in right now is cop wing graphs. So we know all these things about cop wing graphs. They've been classified. They have this dismantling order. Uh, but we don't know how to prove throttling for all uh, cop wind graphs, we don't know how to show it's root n. Um, so this other, this minial type throttling conjecture, is it true? Uh, probably not, but can we find an example that provides a graph that has throttling that's larger than order root n? Uh, one other thing to consider, so strategies for the robber. If you know that the robber's optimal strategy is just stay put, then you can find this sort of sp underlying spanning tree and you can classify throttling that way. So uh, when is the robber's optimal strategy to just stay put? Um, or what other strategies that the robber has? What do they tell you about what the throttling of the capture time is? Uh, and one last thing to consider, uh, edge critical throttling. So this, is done, had been, this has been done for the cop number. What if you add an edge? What if you subdivide? What if you delete? How does that affect the throttling number? And I think with that, I'll stop. It's a little early. both sides playing optimally will cause the robber to travel in a cycle, or is that not possible? Um, if the robber were traveling in a cycle then um, and can continue to do that without being captured, then I would say it's, you don't have enough cops on there. R right. So I guess you, yeah, could, yeah, yeah, I, in, that, in that case too, I guess you would just they put on the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if one thing works and the other yeah. doesn't work, that a way. cycle with one cop chasing the robber yeah. around would do that, but and yeah. you could just put another one on there. further 
questions? Let's thank Kat again.